Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy that uh, we can speak to you via this uh, webinar, the first online competing seminar from our huge project, which we had during the last three years. And I'm also happy to see some familiar faces. And I would ask you to uh, switch off your mic. I can see everyone does it. So we can make uh, each other uh, understandable. Well, today uh, we will speak about two topics. It's about the implementation of the directive and the quality assistance of the directive. And on the other hand, uh, Liliana Mates from Sironov, Romania will speak about the introduction of the electronic training record book. But first, um, as stated, I'm very happy to see you all online, but it would be better to see each other in person if possible. And therefore, it's a pleasure for me to announce that the General Assembly meeting of EDINA, which will take place in the second week of May, eh, during the 16th of May, in Varna, Bulgaria, will proceed. We will organize a hybrid meeting over there. But uh, as I have seen, more than 20 uh, people from at least eight different European countries, Inland Navigation Institutes and uh, other members of EDINA, uh, will come to Varna and we will have a General Assembly meeting in person. Uh, and I'm very, very happy that we can announce that this will happen, actually, after two years of COVID. Okay, let's uh, stay to the point of today, uh, the implementation of the Directive 2397-2017. Maybe you remember that EDINA started the whole work on this Directive uh, way back in 2009, when we uh, gave birth to EDINA, the Association of Inland Navigation Institutes. And our whole goal was to have a level playing field for training and education in inland navigation in Europe, but also outside Europe, so worldwide. And well, maybe a little bit proud, I can see that we actually do have a directive it came into force at the 18th of January, and as you know, a lot of countries are implementing it. But the first step is implementing a directive. The second step, of course, is taking care of the quality of the work that has to be done. What we can see at the moment is that a lot of countries in Europe, especially those countries involved in inland navigation, do have problems with the implementation. For example, uh, the Netherlands have an in-between legislation at the moment, and we really hope that definitive legislation will come into force in September 2022. We see the same in Flanders, in Belgium, and then you have to realize that almost 80% of all ships do have the Belgium or the Dutch nationality. In Romania, I talked today with my colleague from Cyrenov, uh, legislation is done, but we face some other problems there but in the end, I believe that at the end of 2022, the directive will be implemented in most European inland waterway countries. But as I said, this is the first step, implementation. After that, we have to take care of the quality of training and education and find ways and methods to look after this kind of quality assurance. In the maritime sector, we do have the IMO and we have the European Maritime Safety Agency. They take care of quality overall. They will visit and audit several institutes in Europe, will visit and audit ministries, uh, authorities. But in inland navigation, we do not have such a body. So the implementation of a directive is also and always a national affair and national authorities do have to take care if they do it in the right way and if their institutes are following up the directive. In the end, we do need an audit body. We need national authorities, but also EU authorities take care of the quality of the whole system. Because otherwise we will see and face tourism. And that's not what we want. Every member, every associated member of EDINA, but also every person or body involved in inland navigation in Europe is convinced that we must avoid irregularities between countries and between authorities. 
Well, that's the first topic where we speak about. I will give the word to Jörn Boll, and he will introduce us in the field of an audit system taking care of the quality assurance. Then afterwards, we will give the word to Liliana Martes. Sure enough, invented or invented, made a European training record book, a digital European training record book, which we can use to look after the sailing time of those who are on board and trained. In between, you have seen that there is a button upside of your screen, and that's the Q&A. And you can ask your questions via the chat, and Esther, who takes care of the whole editing of this webinar, will take care of those questions and direct them to those who are able to give an answer. So please don't hesitate, ask questions if you have some. Maybe we are not able to find the answer directly, but then we will search for it and give it later by mail or otherwise. Okay, happy to see you as stated. We will now start with Jörn and he will introduce us in the field of quality assurance and how we took care of that from the Maritime Academy Harling and we were the worker package for leader in competing. Jörn, please take over. I hope uh, you can see me or we can see at least the presentation uh, looking at high screen i can see it so let's uh, nose dive into the work we have done in competing and especially uh, in the work packet four which was on quality assurance and quality control as i am stated before this is from our perspective an integral part of uh, <clears throat> the the provision of uh, uh, harmonized lesson material for the education and training of uh, professionals for the inland navigation in Europe. Because at the end of the day, we have to assure that uh, the quality of the education and the training is comparable throughout the entire continent. So um, why quality assurance? As I said, um, uh, the, the, the uh, Objectives or the, um, the, the, quality, uh, the objectives for quality assurance is laid down in the course manuals that uh, the work package three uh, developed in the project, um, which will be presented later by uh, Martis, uh, by Ms. Martis. Um, what we were aiming on in um, in the project was a system to monitor and assess. Uh, the certification that is carried out by uh, the individual uh, training institute in intervals no longer than five years. So after five years, we would like to check back if the quality of the education and training is still met. Uh, what we're aiming for is an independent body for the evaluation of knowledge, understanding and skills, and uh, also the competence acquisition. And we want an independent <laughs> assessment of the certification system. Uh, what we've done at the end of the day is um, we created a system that allows us to document the performance um, and where feasible the deficiencies in uh, curricula of uh, a school that is assessed. What have we done? We, we created an audit list uh, that is meant to be the instrument uh, for uh, the assessment of the quality of a training or an education. The audit list is very closely aligned with the CESNI uh, competence standard that are laid down by uh, CESNI QP. Um, and yeah, this is of course a proposal for a national control system because in this project we can't uh, uh, order any any country to to uh, implement something but it's it's just our best guess how um, a quality assurance system should look like um, we not only developed this uh, system we already tested it in uh, two independent pilots in in real life the first one uh, was at the stc group in rotterdam in uh, september uh, of 2021 and the second one was in the end of january 2022 in Romania at the facilities of Cheronov in Galati. Um, how, how does uh, the system work? Um, this is just a, a, 
excerpt uh, from, from the list. It's, uh, as you can see, we're really closely following the ESPIN standards of uh, 2019. And just as an example uh, I used here is uh, a competence use of propulsion and maneuvering system, as well as appropriate communication in the alarm systems. So, uh, as Queen lays down this competence standards and the uh, corresponding knowledge and skills, what we try to do then is on the right side of uh, the list, we look into the curricula uh, and training material of a given training institution. In this case, we would pick the Dutch institution, of course we are from the Dutch, obviously. And um, if we look into the training material, we find the competence and corresponding knowledge and skills laid down in a textbook, Navigation 1, Chapter 3, and there the textbook describes the uh, knowledge and skills that are laid down in the competence manage level 1.3, competence 7. So uh, this is the, the work that has to be carried out in order to fill out the, the competence list. Uh, the assessment uh, audit list. So what you have then is uh, some fields where you can add which training asset was used, in this case a textbook, can be a training vessel, can be a simulator. Uh, you can remark uh, what your finding was and at the end of the day you will uh, check if the competence is sufficient or not. So that's the whole idea behind uh, this uh, audit list. So what, what we have done in the audits, in the audits that we have done in, in, in Rotterdam and uh, in Galati was a proof of concept. We did not went uh, through all of the competences laid down as Queen 2019. That would be, would have been a lot of work. It's, uh, if we count all together, it's like more than 300, uh, 300 pages of competences, and that's really a lot of work, uh, which was not we were not able to to do in such such short time that we had. Um, but that was not the idea; it was just a proof of concept. The audits itself were attended in Romania by the Romanian Naval Authority, and of course by uh, Chironov. And in the Netherlands, uh, we were visited by uh, representatives of the Dutch Ministry of Infrastructure and Water Man Management, as well as the Dutch Examination Board. And of course, the SCC and the Maritime Academy in Harlingen were also uh, present. Um, we focused there on, as I said beforehand, an excerpt uh, first in operation level field of navigation and the use of LNG on board uh, in that waterway vessels on management level and their focus on maintenance. Um, what we at the end of the day did was uh, we used the practical examination as a proof of uh, the, the, yeah, that the competences were shown by the virtual exam candidate. The exam candidate itself was not a subject of the assessment. It was just, did we, was it shown that the competences described in Esquin were uh, mirrored in the curriculum. Um, of course, a real audit has to take the whole curriculum into account. That will be not just, can't be done in just one day. It will be, take much longer, probably a week or two to make a full audit. But uh, that is of course up to the national states afterwards. Uh, some impressions of uh, the audits we have done on the left side, uh, you see uh, uh, the audit in Galati, where we actually uh, trained on bunkering LNG uh, on a simulator, which was uh, very, very innovative and very, very good. Uh, in the middle, you see our uh, audit in, in Rotterdam, where we were at anchor in the Mars half, and you see the black anchor ball there. So the XM candidate showed that he was able to uh, anchor and set the right day signs. On the right side, once again, uh, the engine room simulator at the facilities in Galati was uh, really, really good uh, assessments, really good days. Uh, we learned a lot and it was quite a success. This uh, already brings me to the end of my presentation. 
uh, we consider the test as a big success. We're able to show that uh, the logic behind yeah, this was sound. We were able to uh, see that it works. Um, as I said before, it became quite clear that a full audit will take a lot of time and work. Uh, but from our perspective, there are several ways to tackle the workload needed. So there are several possibilities here for the assessment of a given education institute, which is, of course, a full assessment of the entire lists, all the assessing competences. This is really takes the two weeks I, I mentioned before. Um, if we scale it a bit down, we can, uh, of course, assess select part of the audit list or in uh, the, the low situation for, for partial assessment of selected part of one or more audit list, depending on the training course that is assessed. Um, the format in which this must happen is, of course, up to the member states uh, who can decide whether they do this for themselves or they delegate the task to an external ideally supranational party like SESNI or someone else. Uh, okay, I thank you for your attention and I give the word back to Ivan. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jörn. This was a very uh, good explanation of how the audit lists work. Um, I can add uh, a little bit uh, about those who are able to uh, carry out such an audit. Eh? Uh, it was purposely that we uh, invited the national authorities because they are the ones who are responsible for the quality of the training programs in their own country. So it's always the national authorities. But of course, then the next level comes, who is responsible for the carrying out of all national authorities? Because if one national authority carries an audit otherwise out than another, we will have inequality in uh, Europe. And that's not what we want. So at the moment where we speak, we have discussions with DG MOVE, yeah? Directorate General MOVE, that's the Transport Ministry of Europe. And we have asked them, well, who is in the end responsible? And Christelle Rousseau, who is responsible, uh, told us that in the end they will be responsible, but they do not know how to look after this. So we are figuring out an other audit system above the national authorities and we will make use of this. And on the other hand, Jörn explained very well that it is impossible to carry out a complete audit using all topics of the audit list. So what we foresee is that the institute becomes the list, will fill it out theoretically, uh, looking after uh, taking care of all competences in the audit list, and the audit commission will pick out several elements and look after that because it's impossible to have a complete audit and this is the way we work in all quality systems and in all audit systems okay as i said before uh, don't hesitate to ask questions via the q a yeah, we will see them and we will try to answer it okay well then we come to our next topic. Uh, Liliane is uh, ready uh, to present from Romania uh, the outcome of work package three, uh, and in this case about the European training record book. Because as we know, in inland navigation, working on board is something all students do, and we have to take care that this is done in the same way as we educate and train people in our schools or institutes. So that's why they took care of this topic. And Liliana, I would ask you to present the outcomes of the European Training Book Record Book and, and how to work with it. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. I'll share it now. Okay. Hello, everybody. And uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, all our um, attendees. Um, for uh, joining this uh, online session. And uh, as uh, Arian said, uh, we uh, have already completed a European training record book to come and help our trainees uh, in their uh, training in order to assure a better, if we may say, a better uh, training, an objective evaluation on board the vessel, which uh, at the moment in linear navigation uh, lacks mainly in Romania. 
So, uh, in our project competing under Work Package 3, we uh, developed the European Training Record Book. In fact, there are two European Training Record Books, one for operational level and one for management level. As uh, part of uh, the training, we all know that every candidate sitting for a union certificate of qualification, irrespective of operational level or the management level, have to um, have all the necessary competencies in compliance with the provision of the directive on the recognition of professional qualifications in inland navigation. Uh, and also adopted by the Delegated Directive of 2020 and laid down in Annex 2. In this respect, the European Training Record Book consists of three sections. Section 1 deals with personal details of the candidate of the trainee, some uh, general introduction of what uh, this training record book is and the uh, benefits of it, guidance both for the trainee or how to complete the training record book and for the boatmaster or for the designated training person who is responsible for the training and even exam not examination but assessment of the trainee what is he is to do there some particulars of professional training of the trainee and uh, um, both master's monthly inspection of the training record book and so on and so forth. I'll present them uh, one by one. Section two includes two items, important items. Uh, they refer to the familiarization uh, and uh, the training of the uh, trainee. And section three comes to assessment. Uh, the very frightening part for all trainees tasks and assi assi assignments, sorry, for both operational and management uh, level. And of course, a final evaluation of the trainee done by the boatmaster of the designated training person with a debriefing session and normally commands. But let's see what uh, this training record book is about. As I told you, in section one starts with the personal details of the candidate. Here, the each candidate must introduce his uh, info, uh, personal information, full name, home address, telephone number, date of birth, place, number of service record book, which is very important, the date of issue, the trade, his signature, yes, the name of the institution that where he acquired the abilities, and of course, a photo required according to the uh, regulations. Now, as I told you, this training record book is uh, part of the approved education and training program in any inland navigation train education and training facility and should be completed during the periods of board, um, board service in the practical stage. This is meant for the training on board, but if there are uh, education and training institutes who can't afford send or they don't have where to send their trainees on board vessels, they are given the possibility to do this in simulators, to have a simulation training. But uh, unfortunately, this can't um, replace the boat, but it does. It does uh, very, very much good. The benefits of uh, using this training record book is uh, are uh, high, both for the trainee and for the employers who can see a very um, uh, uh, wide background and uh, see what they are about to do. It provides the candidate with a greater exposure to a variety of tasks with flexibility in gaining experience. Uh, mostly gaining hands-on experience, basic knowledge and confidence in uh, him and in his abilities that he has uh, formed. Also, it includes guidance for the trainee, as I told you, meaning that 
uh, here uh, the trainee, uh, you can read in the training record book, is given advice how to complete, what to do with this training rock record book, uh, everything that he has uh, to do. Some guidance for the boat master, meaning that the boat uh, is included, the, sorry, that the boat, boat master is the one who has to um, sign it, sign the training record book to uh, keep a thorough look on it and see how the progress of the uh, trainee is done. Under point five, entry five, there are particulars of professional training. This entry should be completed uh, by the trainee or by the boatmaster, but normally by the trainee with the courses and educational program attended uh, inside, yes, on shore, uh, in the training facility with the date uh, of uh, the diploma when it was issued and the number of the diploma to have uh, a general view of the courses that he attended prior to his uh, training period. Under entry six, designated training person and the review of training progress, here the training, uh, the designated training person or the boatmaster is uh, kindly invited to comment and to fill in these entries and to comment on trainees' activity, attitudes, and competence. As you see, first of all, he has to enter the uh, name of the vessel and the type of the vessel. Then some comments on how the trainee did all, performed all the tasks. Normally followed by the name of the designated training person and the date when those comments were laid down. Uh, it is very important that uh, the boatmaster or the tra uh, designated training person should not refer to trainee's character. This is not what interests in a training uh, program. It interests how the tra trainee is able to uh, fulfill his activities, what attitude and how he uh, was able to form and demonstrate his competence. Next, after Completing those entries, the boatmaster normally has to make an inspection of the training record book. In the guidance um, for the trainee, the trainee is advised that he has to uh, present to the boatmaster at certain dates, as it is fixed, established, his uh, European training record book so that the master uh, or the designated training person can uh, verify and uh, write his comments there. Why this? Because after the training, when the trainee comes back on shore, he, ha he needs to take an examination in the company. Yes? He needs to take an examination at the, let's say, Naval Authority or the Inland Navigation Authority representative, yes, in order to obtain his uh, union certificate, either as on at operational level or at management level. And in this respect, this training record book should be completed with all the signatures, stamps, and should reflect objectively the activity that the trainee um, the carried out on board the vessel. The, first, the final entry in this section one is a list of publication and online tools that the trainee used for his training and uh, learning, let's say, because being on the vessel, he is also learning uh, a lot. This is what about section one uh, is. Section two deals with the uh, basic safety of the trainee. This means that first, the trainee will be familiarized with internal procedures and regulations for ensuring safety of life. And an initial training based on documentation for internal procedures regulations, ensuring the trainee's personal and occupational safety during his embarkation. In fact, this is the familiarization on board the vessel. Yeah, and then comes the familiarization with the craft's particulars in accordance with the directive. 
2016-1629 that lays down technical requirements for inland waterway vessels. Let's see what it is about. This is about that the trainee will be familiarized with the name of the craft, the type of the craft or, or the convoy. Yes, the its unique European vessel identification number, uh, the vessel's dimensions, capacities, coupling, steering, bilge, anchors, uh, so on and so forth. All of them are presented uh, here. Yes, he will be familiarized with all these aspects. He needed to know the basics he needs to know on board the vessel. Next. In section three, you will find tasks and assignments. Uh, this section includes tasks for operational level and management level. But what I want to tell you is that the tasks um, will are the same for both levels and they are in accordance with uh, the seven competencies that trainees need to form during their education and training uh, program, meaning navigation, operation of the craft, cargo handling, storage and passenger transport, marine engineering and electrical, electronic and control engineering, maintenance and repair, communication and health and safety, environmental protection. What I want to add here that is that during our uh, competing program uh, project, we have already developed um, course books for each of these uh, competencies, both for operational level and management level. Then uh, there is something more that uh, our trainees need to take in order to receive the union certificate of uh, qualification, for example. Yeah? For, uh, they have the operational level needs to take passenger and navigation uh, experts uh, uh, competencies and liquefied if they work on liquefied natural gas, they need to take these two. So these are uh, what you see here in the table are both are uh, for specialized vessels. Yes, but at management level, our uh, candidates need to take uh, to are given tasks regarding sailing on inland waterways with a maritime character and with the aid of radar. These are compulsory for both masters to um, to have. Here is what a um, task looks like. For example, for navigation, the competency requirements. Yes, the boat master shall be able to plan a journey and conduct navigation on inland waterways, including being able to choose the most logical, economical and ecological sailing route, so on and so forth. You can read here. We have here the competency where we need the, for the sub competency. Let's see. And the abilities the trainee needs to demonstrate, for example, to calculate water level, ability to calculate distances and sailing time, or to instruct crew members. Under uh, point three, here the boatmaster or the designated the training person writes his comments, advice uh, for the trainee for improvement. And also, in the last column, he writes the abilities that the trainee managed to demonstrate. This is very important that these two columns, column three and column four, be very, very uh, objectively uh, filled in to have a proper view of the trainee's progress. In assignments, the focus of the uh, assignments are on the thematic uh, modules uh, for uh, the crew members. As you see, at operational level, they have uh, several specified, specific assignments they have to fulfill. And the focus on, on management level is on the seven core competencies plus what they need to know, what the um, uh, boatmasters need to uh, know, sailing on 
inland waterways with a maritime character and with the aid of rad, uh, radar. Plus, both of them, at operational and management level, they have assignments regarding passenger navigation uh, and uh, working on LNG. These are uh, extra assignments, uh, we may uh, say, but are compulsory to be fulfilled in order the trainee to demonstrate that he uh, formed his, uh, his abilities or even competencies and he is able to uh, sail the uh, ship according to all regulations and uh, all standards. Here is how it looks. It is uh, the table is a little bit small, okay? But the assignments are given, and uh, the trainee will uh, write inside the sheet of paper what he is doing and how he fulfilled his uh, assignment, okay? And the boatmaster needs to check this assignment the way he. Uh, conducted and also to give his comments. In the final evaluation of the trainee, uh, there is the practical examination. This final examination is practical. Okay. For example, in competence one, navigation. Yes, I give two uh, examples, assisting in mooring, unmooring, and holding or towage operations, and assisting with coupling operation of push barge combinations. Yeah? Here, uh, in column three, the boatmaster of the, or the designated uh, training person should uh, write if the examination was taking, taken on board the vessel or on the simulator. As I previously told you, yes, there are cases when the training facility can't afford sending trainees on board the vessel. So the simulator can be used. And the last one, after all the examination was done, the boatmaster should complete this table with the date, the debriefing session, name of the, uh, his name, name of the training vessels, his signature, yes, and also the signature of the trainee after reading the final evaluation given by the boatmaster, yes, in order to um, agree, or maybe the trainee considers that uh, he doesn't agree to the final evaluation and all these should be discussed. Uh, this is in brief what this uh, European training record book uh, is about. Uh, if I were to explain you in large, uh, uh, it uh, would be a very, very long uh, time. You can download these uh, the two European training record books uh, either from uh, EDINA website or for our uh, project website, IWT Competencies, and you can uh, see what uh, it is included uh, there. This is all. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, please write them and uh, we'll answer them. Thank you very much. Okay, okay yeah. Yeah. thank you thank very you. much for a very good introduction to the electronic or European training record book. Um, I've seen that uh, it has been taken up in some institutes and I've also seen that in the Netherlands we try to uh, give it a digital way, so to make an app out of it. And that will be a further step, so you can work on it online. Okay, that will not be possible in every institute, but that's the next step, I guess. Okay, well, um, as I stated, uh, now is the time for you to ask questions, so please use the Q&A uh, or come forward, that's one, and uh, we will try to give an answer. And in the meantime, um, I have to uh, say two more things. One is that we will have more of this kind of webinars, from competing. They will be broadcasted uh, between now and summer, and you will get a mail 
informing you about that. That's one. And secondly, uh, Edina has got a question to take up on the website all the deliverables of the outcome of competing, and we will do so. So together with the colleagues from Austria, we will take care between now, the end of the competing project, and the start of the new school year, that everything, every deliverable, every course manual, the training record book and so on, will be available on the Edina website. Most of it for the general public and some outcomes only for the members. Okay, use please the Q&A button. I've seen a question of Pascal Roland. Hello, Pascal. Um, uh, he asks, is, it, uh, is the record book available in more uh, languages than only English? Well, at the moment, not. Uh, uh, we have it in Dutch, we have it in English, but that's for now uh, what we have. Um, we will try to make it available in more languages, but we have to find sources, resources to pay for it. Will not be from the competing project, but we will try as a dinner because for us uh, it's very important to spread out the news as much as possible. The course manuals will also be available in English, and that's the common language we use in uh, the competing project. Okay, I just have a look at the QA. There are no questions coming up. Well, um, see that. Everyone has had the possibility to ask questions. I would invite you to look at this webinar later on. Uh, Esther will make it available for everyone. You will get a link from this broadcast. Maybe you can spread it out uh, under your colleagues uh, in your institutes or make it available for other stakeholders in the inland navigation sector. And, well, here is your uh, Here's the information about it. I want to thank you for your attention. Happy to share this with you. Uh, and I hope to see you in person at the General Assembly meeting of EDINA or on the end session of the competing project. And that will be at the 14th of June in Rotterdam. Uh, I really look forward to see you all and to talk with you in person and to discuss our implementation, our work on making inland navigation and the training and education in the in in navigation far better than it was 20 years ago. Thank you for your attention. Bye bye. See you.